just just make it clap. Just make it clap. Do you want to hear a cool story? Uh, go on. So the kids I teach on a Saturday. You've been uh, holding on to this one. Huh? You've been holding on to no, this No, no, just that reminded me to tell you. <laughs> um, the kids I teach on a Saturday, they're probably like between eight and 11. Right. This one class. And I used to have a thing. Well, they taught me that their teachers at school, when they want them to be quiet, do a double clap. And then they all double they clap. They do a double quiet. clap. Yeah, yeah. So I've changed it to, I go, just make a clap. And then I'll shout it again, just make a clap. And they all have to get the same rhythm. I'm so stealing that. How gangster. That's so gangster. And it's good because I'm trying to teach them rhythms as well. Yeah. To yeah. see if they can copy the rhythm. I'm still in that. Yeah, and they like they they love it. They're like, I think they actually are naughty and noisy just, just so I do that. Just to get the clap. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> and now for the warm up in their class, instead of doing my traditional warm up, uh, to have, make it more fun because the kids we do the Casper slide, but every time they say slide to the ref, slide to the left, nah, nah, nah. slide to the left, slide to the right, we do Bart Simpsons and we will do the stomps as an A town stomp. Oh yeah. Yeah. Gangster. And like the cha cha slide, like uh uh now what's it say? Whatever the like South Street bit is, yeah, like yeah. I'll try and make them grab a partner or like. <laughs> you do or, that every time. I'll grab not every most classes <laughs> now. I've started doing it, and it saves me having to do a real warm up. Yeah, yeah, sick idea. You guys can steal that. The kid they love it, but like give instructions to it. ATL stomp, yeah. And like and now Charlie Brown, I'll be like we're gonna shuffle. Ah uh, okay, uh, what else is there? Two half sister. Is that that one? Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. And like I'll so make what do you do for the hops? Uh, th I just make them jump, but I make them like make it like really cool jumps instead of just hopping on the spot like a fucking rabbit. <laughs> like <laughs> I was like, where are you gonna go with this? I'll make rabbit. them do cool hops or like, and then like uh, do you know when he goes now take it to the flow? Could you do a farmer how low or can a stomp? you go? Uh, Could I do what? Like a farmer or a stomp? A yeah, probably. Hops. Yeah, I'll try that. And when I go, how low can you go? We do the like the limbo thing all the way to the floor, and then they I, I try and get them to get back up. And then you're a granddad, you get stuck back there. I don't go all the way down. <laughs> I just start it, and they copy, and I'm like, <laughs> 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 yeah, most white boy English yeah. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Stealing it. Good concept. Yeah, and that's all for today's episode, that's guys. <laughs> <laughs> and Come here for the finest information on the ins and outs podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Teaching the, oh, I can't even remember <laughs> what it is. Teaching you the. Yeah. The inside minds of the industry's finest, something like that. It's 2023, it's the place oh to God. be. The Yins and Outs podcast talking about the industry. It's Kane and Jake. Ooh, 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 ee. I got fresh <laughs> kicks, and so does he. Yeah. And so does he. Yeah. Jake started, Jake's like left me from the Jordan front. He no longer buys Jordans. Buy Nikes as well. But they are part of the same. Same company. You buy blazers now. Blazers, You're a baby. skater boy. Skater boy. He was a skater boy. I said to you later, boy. Are we actually going to talk about anything today? Yeah, yeah. I got the Soulfly uh, Jordan 1s on, which is a collab shoe, which was destined to pop and do amazing things. And it flopped hard. And it just didn't like get as popular as they wanted it to. And um, a lot of people say that it's one of the ugliest Jordan shoes that's been made. I really like them. Yeah, I do think they look like fancy bowling shoes, but I don't care. Yeah, I'm about it. The red thing makes it look like a bowling shoe, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I now I can't I'd see that. You shouldn't have said that. I know, but I don't care. I like him. If I look like the flyest bowler around. <laughs> <laughs> Can you look fly and be a bowler? <laughs> Sounds like a bowler. It's not the same. Yeah, but. Okay. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> if you haven't noticed, people watching, I'm wearing sunglasses today. It's because cold it's here. cold as fuck outside. So my theory is they'll keep my eyes warm. Jokes. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to channel, in a vision, channel the sunshine. Okay. Yeah. To have made some weather change. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to do like, you know, Peter Pan with like, just imagine. Imagine this food. And then that was the sun. This episode is up to a hot start. I like it. I'm, I'm here for it. Cool. Uh, what's cracking? 2023, what have you been up to? Uh, Nothing. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's it. You got a tattoo. I did get a tattoo. What's it mean? Uh, so it's the Native American tribe symbol for the hummingbird. Wait, slowly. The Native American tribe symbol for the hummingbird. Why a hummingbird? Um, because if you see it before a hunt, it's normally like quite good luck. But it's also... A kind of it, like wait, a, if you see it... If you see it before a hunt, it's good luck. Well, so like, you see a like a hunting, like, sh like shooting hunting. Yeah, because this is from like, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, long yeah. before... <laughs> tribal times. Yeah, tribal times. Um, so yeah, it's normally like a good luck sign, but also it's like a representation of like love, intelligence and harmony, which I quite like. Oh, so what made you want to get that? Uh, I've had it for like in my head for like 10 years because I got my this tattoo on my arm when I was 17. What's that one? Uh, the Native Dildo. American tribe. 
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, so they're also Native American uh, for the journey of life. Oh. So I'm so conflicted. It's like you look Asian slash Jewish, but you follow Native American like. No, it's, do you know what? My mum bought me a necklace. You're so versatile. So versatile. <laughs> You're so cultured. <laughs> <laughs> so I can be Mexican one day. And <laughs> Vietnamese the next. Um, <laughs> uh, my mum bought me a necklace when I was 17. And I love the symbol on it. And then I was like, I'm getting a tattooed. And my mum hated it because she hates tattoos. And then she was like, but I do like that tattoo because she bought me the necklace. That's nice. Um, and it's that's very circular. And so that one's also very circular. Mm. So it kind of coincides with each other. Yeah. Circular, make your arm look bigger as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good job, bro. Yeah, Proud of you. But um, it's, there's like a little story. So like the quote on my ribs is like how my approach to life. Uh-huh. That's like my journey. Spray and pray. Life. Brain pray, baby. It's <laughs> actually a dope tattoo. <laughs> Get it here. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, and this is like my love for life. Oh, nice. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I won't go into mine because we haven't got a long enough, def- long enough episode, no, but like good a, job. You've got a gazillion of them. Yeah. And there's long ass meanings, but that's dope. I, I was uh, I was thinking about getting more tattoos this year. I had, It was completely spontaneous. I want to do like the rest of my whole arm. Do you? Yeah, but Ooh. I only know like a few things that I want done, so I know that the rest is just going to be kind of like off the cuff. You just get that on it. That's what I'm having. Oh, yeah, actually. Yeah, but I'm not having the ins and outs. I'm just going to have me. <laughs> 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 what a narcissistic <laughs> prick. <laughs> I'm, gonna get I'm just going to have me. <laughs> <laughs> me <laughs> tattooed on my arm. No, yeah. but no, I, wonder, I bet you no one actually knows that's you. They do now. They do now. Uh, <laughs> in my studio. That's a photo <laughs> of you in my studio. Yeah. As there should be. As it should um, be. No, I want that just because, like, to me, like, it represents, like, the brand, which has become my favourite mm-hmm. It's a massive part of It's a huge part of my life. life. Yeah. Yeah, and it's my baby. Your baby. My baby, baby. And I want some, I want a, my dog's paw print as well. Oh, that's gangster. Yeah. It's a little bit questionable, but I don't care. Uh, yeah. I think when you get to a point where you've got loads of tattoos, it's it like... It no longer comes alive. It's not like... It doesn't, like, it, it means something attention. to me and it's not going to draw attention to anyone else. Well, that's the thing about tattoos is when you first get them, you're like, oh, everyone can notice it. It's, like, really visible. You think it's really visible. And then it just becomes part of you. Like, yeah. I don't ever see this as a tattoo. I forget I've got It's them. just part of my arm. I, I Every know? time I take off my jumper and I'm wearing a basketball jersey teaching, I see my sleeve and I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got a like, I'm like, oh, yeah. I forgot <laughs> what that looked like. Because you don't really look at it yourself, mm. right? You never know. I don't think other people really look at it either. It just mm. becomes part of your visual identity. Yeah, it's true. You just got us the guy with tattoos. Yeah. When I first uh, started working as a dancer, tattoos for dancers were like really taboo. Because like, like it was like, don't get them because you won't book jobs or like they'll stop you from getting certain jobs. Like, right. and it was a real thing, um, especially because like fashion-y kind of jobs are like a big thing. Like clothes show at the time was popping. Mm-hmm. Like everyone wanted to do clothes show, but I was way too short um, <laughs> and ugly. <laughs> and ginger <laughs> anything more I'm probably not good enough but all like there was loads of reasons like not to get tattoos so I remember the first uh, like tattoo I had that wasn't the one on my finger for like a gimmick was on my ribs and I had it placed there so if I went to an audition and I had to be shirtless I could squeeze my arm <laughs> against my ribs and it would hide the tattoo not wash your dancing though no but in my head I was like if, you're just if like, they notice I've got a tattoo like on my ribs them. when I'm dancing like my dancing's dog shite like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but I was like, if I just stand there, I can, I can cover it up. That's so funny. Isn't that crazy that my whole first like real tattoo was, that was my mindset as, will it prevent me from working? Yeah. But, but I then, think, like, then also it can probably work, help you get jobs now. Well, that's when I started, I started getting like a full sleeve in that because I wanted to stop being seen as the, the young white ginger Disney kid. And I want to be looked at as like more like bad boy, bad boy thuggy. like thuggy kind of thing, which I still didn't manage to do. But, um... <laughs> I think it made me look a bit more like uh, a bit older because I looked really young. Like even when I was like yeah. 25, I looked like I was 20. Now I'm 32. I look like I'm 32. But yeah, yeah. You're still young. Bro. Thanks, bro. I got you. Safe. You look younger than me. Do you think? And I'm five years younger than you. I don't think I look younger than you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do look young at the moment though, guys, because like if you can see my face in this wonderful lighting, I didn't sleep very good last night, but I haven't drunk alcohol for almost, what's the day? You're 24 now, baby. I, I did drink on the 1st of January because it was my anniversary for my engagement. That's, that's but I've, so it's a solid reason. But otherwise, I've done dry January-ish. I'm 17 <laughs> days with no January-ish. <laughs> I'm 17 days with no alcohol, and I genuinely feel like a different person. 
I, dude, I've tried to tell you. For, I'm not gonna say it. Gonna no, say go it. on, go I, on. I've tried go to on. tell you for years. Go on. Tried to tell you for and years. And I've not been as creative. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't. Done I've it. been so bland. <laughs> I've been beige. You haven't actually messaged me again, Jake. <laughs> I've got a great idea. We're going to Uganda. <laughs> yeah, like I've had no ideas since then. So I do think a bit of alcohol does spark my confidence no. and creativity. It really does. But I was really concerned about my well-being and my liver. <laughs> <laughs> and my liver. If I'm being completely honest. And I kept think I kept looking at myself thinking, I look, I, I don't know, I feel like I always looked young. And I was looking at myself like, like around Christmas time. I was like, I look 32. Don't like that. No. Alcohol really ages as well. Yeah. Really like dehydrates yeah. the skin. It right. does help though when I meet people the same age as me and I'm like, oh, I look better than you. <laughs> <laughs> I c- c- couldn't do a few more drinks. <laughs> like, but anyway, back, to my space. back on. Um, yeah. S- We've seven, gone in like 70 days sober. I love it. I recommend good, good it, guys. Try it. No, it's, it's And it, it was kind of to teach, my, remind myself that I do have like discipline and control because I don't really need uh, discipline like I used to have it. As what? a as a dancer, like I was always like, I have to look job ready at all costs, and like I was always like have to be bookable. And now my life doesn't consist of that. I can have a bit more leeway to be a human, mm-hmm. but I feel like I swang the very other other way. But I was using alcohol, I think, as a um a way to suppress my tiredness. If that makes any sense. Uh, okay. Like it's to help me wind down and like when I'd be frustrated, day. I'd do it and it would just like suppress everything mm-hmm. and make me feel relaxed and stop me th- overthinking stuff. And make you think about buying podcast bikes instead. Yeah, that happened quite a lot. <laughs> but then the downside to it is I would then, if I didn't have a drink or like a night went past that a drink, I'd be like, I need to drink. Like, I can't sleep. Well, it's also, like... Yeah. The first few nights not drinking, I really struggled falling really? asleep. Yeah, That's yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Goes to show, like, again, how habitual we are. We yeah. were talking about this about coffee before uh, before the podcast. But also, like, how quickly you fall, fall into a new normal. Because, mm. like, for year, for a good year, I drank probably, like, five, six cans a night for a whole year. Probably, like, 2021. What, beer? Yeah. Mm. And that just became my absolute normal. And it mm. was, like, without it, it felt wrong. Yeah. And the moment I stopped, I was like, oh my God, life is so much better without alcohol. Mm, I do feel much better waking up in the mornings yeah, and stuff like that. Feel so much more fresh. Like, think I feel how many, more creative. Think how many episodes I've come in here hungover. <laughs> like, and they might not know, but I come in, I'm like, I'm tired. I'm like, tired. drunk a whole bottle of wine and a half. And I think for like your lifestyle, like you obviously do the most. Like you, how many hours do you teach on, on regular? Cut it down, but last, like September to Christmas, it was between 39 and 43. Which is just a ridiculous. Week. Oh, it's insane. You know, that's like beyond professional athlete footballer yeah. level, you know. And to then marry that up with alcohol. A lot of alcohol. A lot of alcohol. Like a lot of units a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Completely against. Unsustainable. Unsustainable. You know? And uh, to counterbalance it, I'd make sure I use the sauna like every other day <laughs> to try and remove yeah. inflammation. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I feel much better. So guys, I recommend that if you find yourself having a little drinky drink and you don't need it, try not to. Yeah, and I think but it also leads to worse habits after, like eating. Like how easy is it to go for like a Greg's in the morning after a night of drinking? You know, uh, that's the I know you, you've, you've always that's been That's where I was really good. Like, But like... For me, like if I ha- if I'm hungover, like instantly pull for like shit food. Yeah, you like pastry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like every time we've had a drink, you re- you uh, appear with croissants. <laughs> every <laughs> every yeah, time, <laughs> every time we have a drink, you go, you come back and you go, I got us breakfast. Go, what you got? Coffee and croissants. <laughs> I'm like, croissants. fuck, we're in, we're in like a shit version of France. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, I really pull for like shit food after. Yeah, interesting. Um, That's funny. But uh, yeah, I definitely think there's like some to say like my creativity levels and my work ethic goes down for like three days after drinking. Yeah. But it's only because I've stopped the hour that I can know I can that. recognize how yeah. much of a difference it makes. But I think we should recognize our habits, try and recognize our habits that we do anyway and see if you can mini- take control of them. I'm not saying you have to remove them completely. Yeah, yeah. But, but try and show take that control, control of them to show that you're in control and the habit isn't. Well, that's something that I've been thinking about, uh, I was thinking about quite recently, like in terms of mental health. I think... Um, a lot of mental health is derived from the idea that we don't feel in control of ourselves. Mm. Um, and when we go, I want to do something, and then you don't pull up, you kind of create a, a negative loop. And so you just reinforce the idea that you're not in control. Mm. But I think when you you make steps to show that you're in control of yourself or your habits or whatever, that reinforces a confidence within you that you can turn in any direction and yes. there's a lot to say about mental health in that mm. it's you like know? it's like i think people that can make themselves exercise every day like 
they're showing like even though they don't want to they're making it happen and they're doing it it gives them a bigger boost of confidence in everywhere else because mm -hmm. they're like i overcome something every day whether i want to or don't want Everyone. to absolutely and it's a positive overcome it's not like a negative yeah, overcome. yeah, yeah. speaking of uh health i'm gonna do a little little plug for my homie jacob Ooh, modak that's a, that was a nice little that was a great transition that was wasn't a great it? Transition. i didn't even plan it i just thought right then yeah, on the spot go. so my homie jacob um, if you know what uh, the Czech practice is, I think that's what it's called. Czech, he's a Czech practitioner. Um, he got his qualification from Paul Czech, which is like a huge deal. Uh, think of like your average PT <laughs> times 9 million. It's like an ultimate masters in health. I've got such a cold. Sorry, guys. Um, he's doing a one day injury, the holistic injury injury prevention workshop he's doing on sunday january the 29th um he's going to be covering of jan, of jan yeah yep. sunday the 29th of january he's doing practical understanding of the check for doctor model uh the six foundation health principles the lower limb in relation to dance um how the core and core conditioning relates to the lower limb for dance, simple training and lifestyle changes to prevent injury, awareness of when more in-depth one-to-one assessment and coaching will be needed, uh, be guided through the creation of your own nutrition and lifestyle and zone exercise program you can take away with you and start doing immediately. And it's, I believe it's a hundred pounds. It says invest a hundred pound once for the, for the one day workshop apply the principles and you'll save yourself thousands of pound, 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 pounds on treatments in the future overall. Prevention dash cure. So uh, check him out. Go hit him up on Instagram. It's at Jacob, J-A-C-O-B, Modak, M-O-D-A-K. Um, I highly recommend Jacob it. Jacob Modak. Um, I know quite a lot about uh, the Czech Institute and like the thing and like it's all holistic based. There's no medicines. There's no like food is medicine. Lifestyle is medicine. And it is actually phenomenal. I should probably sign up myself. Mm, dope. Yeah. And that's so true. Like a hundred pounds. Fuck all. A hundred pounds for your health is nothing. Oh my God. Like if you were going to a good sports therapist, it would cost you between 60 and a hundred pounds an hour. Mm, and he's really to making all this go. relatable for dancers mm. for, uh, for it to carry across an hour life. Cause he, he's a martial artist originally and right. then he really invested in dance and what learned dance and went from being absolute trash to really good like he's a really good dancer and then he was like okay i want to get into fitness and mm -hmm. got into the czech institute and he's like i actually see a flaw within the dance community everyone's always injured everyone doesn't look after we themselves lot, for right? the for the output that they do mm -hmm. he sees us as professional athletes he's like but we don't treat ourselves like no. that so it's his goal to to help that so go check out jacob Jacob, it's another Jacob. As of another Jacob. On the topic of professionalism, showreels is yeah. a big part of my life at the moment. It is a big it's part. A of really big part of my it's life a big life. part of my life too. Is it? I feel like I get asked every other day advice about showreels at the moment. Is because it, why, why is it at the moment? I think What's because uh, college grads or college third years, they're six months away from graduating. Ah, uh, okay. So about and to they're probably in that time where they're thinking about it mm -hmm. and they're probably getting lots of different information from other places or other people or they see other people's showreels and they got have to have one like that mm -hmm. um and i think as a for me to have a showreel it's a lot easier for me for that to happen because i have footage of me You've on stage and content and yeah. like you know there's something to show my body of work that i've done but as a college student that's about to graduate like you don't have high quality footage of you dancing next to an artist so it's quite hard to showcase what you've done because you haven't maybe done a lot you might have done a move it piece or like an end of year show but there's not a lot of footage that puts you on a platform where you're going to be seen as a high level dancer so i guess you have to just film yourself doing whatever genres of dance you want to be seen doing right so i think it's quite challenging because you have to showcase yourself in the highest case possible but probably just you filming yourself doing a solo. Yeah, it doesn't look great. Yeah, um, and if think how many people do that. Like, think how many people are in the same boat every year that have yeah, to put try their phone on a tripod and... Yeah, and they yeah. do it. And, you know, students, um, money is normally a struggle. Like, mm -hmm. financially aren't in a position to throw, like, thousand pounds at a show reel or something like that. They're not in a position to blast all this money. So they have to really, like, kind of get it right the first time. I think you want to mm. get it right the best you can the first time. Um, and I just feel like they're really misinformed. 
But at the moment, you're like the becoming like the showreel, the showreel guy. Showreel guy. <laughs> I've I've got like twenty showreels booked in at the moment. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, I I like I've edited quite a lot of showreels, especially like I've also done quite high level dancers and choreographers as well. And I think what stands out to me is a showing of quality of dance. So like is your show actually showing off your capability or just looking fancy? Mm. And the second is like quality of footage. Like even at like the highest levels of choreographers, like I was editing a yeah high level choreographer the other day. And when I'm switching between low quality content as in like poorly filmed or low download rate or whatever. Yeah, bad pixelation. Bad pixelation or, or whatever versus like good content. It really makes a difference, I think. So yeah. having like really nice crisp footage makes you pop, I think. Yeah, and how your brain receives that information yeah. and you disengage without even knowing you disengage. Oh, it's bizarre. It's like all of a sudden you go, oh, they're not worth time. They're not worth that. They haven't got a high value mm. to them. Yeah, because production does make you, the aesthetic of it uh, puts them on a platform as well. You put yeah. them on a pedestal for the aesthetic of the it shows video. That not, you're just the, not just the substance of the video mm -hmm. you know what i mean but then even i think the substance of the video people think oh i've learned all these things i have to show all these things go do you know what i mean and they just throw everything at it and they don't think about it tactically about what they're trying to showcase mm -hmm. like i always think like what's your goal like first of all you need to establish what your goal is what kind of jobs are you trying to book what 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 how do you want to be seen what do you want to be seen as you have to figure out all these things before you start filming for your show reel or mm -hmm. putting it together in what order is seen. Like if you go, oh, I want to dance for uh, Justin Bieber. I want to be a commercial dancer or a tour with Mabel. And your opening number's an and MT your opening piece. Number's an MT piece or a tap number, you know, it's not going to really make any sense. Mm -hmm. Like I, I imagine, I don't know this, this is me uh, taking a wild guess, but I imagine I'm really accurate. I bet whoever watches, whoever job it is to watch show reels to take on for castings, whether it's an agent, whether it's looking at you for a potentially job, I bet you they watch the first 20 to 30 seconds of every show reel. If that. If that, and if you've not captivated the needs that they're taking you for or the mm -hmm. what they're looking for, they go on to the next. Yep. So I think a big thing that people also make a mistake on is, we'll go through a, a quite a few points, but they try and save the best to last. They want a big ending, mm, that's you know? Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a thing where we're like, got to finish big and strong. Like in a dance number, like for a show piece, yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't want an incredible beginning and a shit end. You want a strong beginning, yeah, always the but you want a big ending. At the end, because it? At, like with a film or like uh, a song or a show, we always remember the ending because it's the last thing mm -hmm. we see. But the reality is whoever's watching these cast it from casting or whatever who's watching these videos probably won't make the end. So actually, I think you need a big beginning. Big beginning. You need the strongest part at the front. Mm. I know, I agree. I, it's like the first paragraph of a CV, isn't it? It's no different. Exactly. You know, because if they're... It is your CV. If they're disinterested in the first 20 seconds, they're not going to make it to one minute. To the end, yeah. Um, I also think... Sh uh, shong? Shong. I also think Shong. I also think song choices are the biggest thing for me. So this, yeah. So this is what I always pull people up. I like often actually say no to song choices that I've been telling me. students the ones they've been saying to me. I'm like, you're crazy. So my my current theory, and I'll uh -huh. let you hear your thought on this, is most people watching sh your show reels now are probably in their late twenties and thirties. Mm -hmm. So choose a song from that era. So okay. I'm encouraging people to go 90s and 2000s mm -hmm. because it's most relatable to the viewer mm -hmm. who's probably going to be watching it. Mm -hmm. That's my theory. Okay. I, I, I agree with your theory 100%. But to, to double up on it, if you like the song and all your friends like the song, but your parents, your auntie, your uncles, your nans, or your brother and sisters don't, it's the wrong song. It's the wrong song. Oh, okay. So it's like almost like a stress test. So go to every genre of or every era in your family, yeah, every age. What do you think of this song? How does it make you feel? Mm. And if they all find the song that they all like the most, and that's the kind of feel you want. You also want something like, I think if you choose a song, when whoever's watching it, watching it has to watch it, say they've watched 20 that day. They want the one that's going to make them smile and smile. feel good. It's, you, I always said, get the one that makes you go start banging their yeah, heads. You start like, enjoying you and you smile too. too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because then they're already going to be more interested yeah. and it's going to make them feel good. Music releases, uh, it's, it's, it's proven scientifically, music releases endorphins. 
we relate to music in ways we don't know. So like normally if you play a sad song, it doesn't make us happy. We will naturally mm -hmm. find it relatable because we'll take our brain to something that we've, say Adele, like a sad Adele song or a sad <laughs> Sam Smith song. We like those songs because we all have had that story of a guy breaking up with us or a girl breaking up with us or whatever. So maybe don't choose something which is about a sad song because no. it's gonna make the person maybe think of something sad. Find a happy, uplifting, fun song. So like for me, in my show reel, I use Jamira Quai Canned Heat because <laughs> there's gonna be thousands of show reels now. It won't be say thousands four. It won't be as good as mine. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I use that because, and I'll tell you my theory behind it. There's a bunch of different theories why I used it. It's up, it's a fast tempo. Mm -hmm. It's exciting from the very beginning. It has a little tiny interlude and then it goes boom, in. Mm -hmm. There's no yeah. like 40 second, intro do you know what i mean it's like little intro so i was like the little intro can be show my headshot bang we're in i started with the best the highest quality footage of the of, on my uh on my music video real. so i have like me doing megan trainer's music video at the yes. beginning, yeah, where yeah. there's just four of us and it's in a cool colorful bright room so i didn't show you stage stuff i'm also showing you next to a big artist yeah but stage stuff like i've not really got much stuff of me on my own on there it's normally all with artists but all my stage stuff they're all dark because stages are quite dark with mm. gloomy lighting. Whereas I gave you me in a pink shirt and a big cool hat. Pop him. Like it's pops from the jump. Yeah. So that was my visual aspect. And then with the song, the song keeps saying dance. Like, and so I was like, oh, I said, I'm showcasing my ability to dance. So it's like nothing left for me to do, just dance. All these bad times I'm going through, just dance. So I was like, it just makes sense. Yeah. And also it's the same song that I booked my dream job to. So it had a real meaning to me and it oh. showcased me. Oh, that's interesting. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. to me, not only does it tick all the genres and all the boxes, because I know uh, people across all different age demographics like that song, mm -hmm. because it's just a feel good song. It also had a meaning to me. Because there's no point you choosing a Tom Jones song if you don't like it and it doesn't represent you, even though it ticks all the other boxes. Because it's still got to represent you. Yeah, so it's often that I always think it's like, how do you want to be sold? Yeah, what's you your know? character? So like, if you come in and you choose Nicki Minaj, and you're like a balletic dancer. Yeah, or you're <laughs> like, make or you look really young. It yeah, doesn't yeah. work in your favor no. because Nicki Minaj talks about vulgar things normally, yet you're going to be seen as an 18 year old who can play younger. Yeah, yeah. So Unless you're trying to be Jojo Gomez. Yeah. You don't want to use a Nicki. Yeah, but, but Jojo Gomez is a grown ass woman now. Yeah, like, so, so a Nicki yeah. Minaj song works perfectly for Yeah, her, exactly. Do you know what I mean? But also, it, it puts you in a box because let's say a 70 year old casting director watches that video. What's the likelihood of them liking that? Mm. That's not her demo. No. It's hard. It is really hard. So hard. But I, my thing is like, find a song that every like everyone in your family likes. Yeah. And I'm if it has a long too. intro, you have to edit it to make it exciting really fast. Mm. And I also think like the BPM is really important. Yeah. Like me, me as I, when I edit show reels, I try and make movement match BPM. So it's not just like you see a lot of show reels where it's just like a blank canvas song, mm. and they just throw footage over the top. Yeah. I try and make it fit musically. Um, and you are fantastic at that. Like I always say, your, your superpower is being able to make uh, videos and movement match music. Ma yeah, yeah, and yeah. your even how you connect the movements together from each different scene. Mm -hmm. So like, and I'm not going to give away your superpower. Yeah, don't give, don't give away the juice. But don't like, give away the juice. <laughs> your ability to make videos uh, more acceptable for your brain to take in the information is second to none. Thank you. Like, thanks. Steve. It's very very clever. Um, but I guess yeah. we've kind of covered the music thing, but, but like just choose a BPM song that makes sense to the music. Like if you're doing ballet, don't choose a high BPM cause it won't make sense. Yeah. A hundred percent. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. In, it, well, it can, but that means it, you just have to make the ballet way more exciting. You can't yeah, just stand like there and do a tondu and make it soft. It has to have some fight to it and a bit of mm -hmm. aggression. Like your, whatever you're showing on the video also has to relate to the song. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, like I was speaking to a student that I teach and he was like, what about suit and tie? I think it's a dope song. And I was like, it is a great song. It's a wonderful song, but it starts with, I'll be on my suit and tie shit. Well, tie, I, shit. I was like, you can't have that at the beginning. No. Be out. And he, unless it goes straight to, I can wait till I get you on the floor. Good looking. Like, that's nice. That's a fun bit. But again, does that tick every genre? It might only show you in one light. And he was only thinking about himself. 
Mm-hmm. He wasn't thinking about the overall spectrum. Then he was like, what about Anti Up? And I was like, uh, yeah, yeah. Do, do. fantastic song. Great if song. you're competing at a UDO competition. <laughs> but like, I actually used that. Yeah, of course, everyone has. <laughs> like, it's not the right song or the right vibe for what you need. So you have to find a song that ticks all the boxes. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I can throw a million out here, but I'm not going to because then you'll all use them and yeah. you should pay for my expertise. Yeah. Um, Coming soon. <laughs> <and> outs. <laughs> uh, out and in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't know. Just an idiot. Yeah, so the song to me is a huge big deal. Yeah. Um, I like your thing about the BPM of the song is such a valid point. My little hack to that, which I wasn't going to say, but I feel like I will because I'm a genius. Um, Probably not a genius. Someone's probably thought this before, 100%, but it's what I think. Uh, Let's say you know I'm going to showcase me doing, let's say it's me. I'm going to showcase me doing some choreography, some house, lock-in, some nice grooves, and some break-in. Instead of me filming five different routines to five different songs i'm gonna adapt all my movement to the same song that is my show real song therefore when it's edited together i'm always dancing on beat on beat therefore makes the life it's way always easier. makes your life easier yeah. it makes it easier for your brain to receive it because if you're dancing to a tempo which is like this and then the song is going yeah it doesn't make like sense. Like that was, see that change of rhythm and that was awful. But, <laughs> that's why I can't tap. But like, it doesn't make sense visually for your brain to take it in. Mm-hmm. And people who don't understand dance might not even know that that's hard for them to take in. Or it's not as nice for them to take in. But if it just matches the music perfectly, like why would you not make, make it easier? Your goal is to make whoever's watching your video you want to make their experience the most enjoyable experience mm-hmm. it can be and the easiest and I think way to take in info. There's so many things that we take in subconsciously. Like if, if, if the movement is matching with the music, like maybe someone who's watching it doesn't even actually recognize that it's happening, mm. but they might just go, oh, this feels nice. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's about that. It's about like, oh, this it makes nice. sense. It makes sense. Like it's a, I think um, marketing, because you're, you're effectively just marketing yourself. Yeah, you're making your own adverts on you. Yeah, absolutely. And it's like, what we take in subconsciously with marketing, we we don't actually fully appreciate how intense of a of the subconscious stuff comes in, like whether, mm. what color scheme it is, what you know, what brand does a, a logo look like, like why is Nike's tick the way Nike's tick is, like yeah. what are they doing on a subconscious level, and that's often what I think about with showreels is like Here, what are they? Here's a good one. So speaking of brands, so if I was filming a showreel, even me, I would try to not wear branded stuff. Because it categorizes you. Because it categorizes you. But let's say I'm wearing uh, my favorite Jordan and Nike outfit, but I want to send my showreel to Adidas. Yeah, they're gonna be pretty pissed. <laughs> well, well they just thought about that. They're just you're automatically going. I prefer Nike. Mm-hmm. So you're not a good representation of their brand. You're not a good ambassador of their brand. Yeah. So like, try not to have like big branding things because then it does. Then it also doesn't become about you. It becomes about your modeling clothes. Mm -hmm. or your modeling and i think that's where slightly off topic but like even with like headshots and photo shoots people be like oh i'm gonna wear this brand clothing i'm gonna wear this but now you're not modeling you you're modeling clothes you're showing that you'd make a good way of branding clothing but the person wants to buy into you not your jacket not your jacket yeah i haven't ever thought about that that's interesting i like that because it shouldn't be the clothes that make you bookable it should be you that makes you bookable Mm -hmm. i had another point uh i've lost it Sorry. So yeah, like even like branding for the video, like, you know, wear colorful stuff if that's what you want to do. Like it's completely on you what you feel like represents you or what's going to make you eye pop. I would switch it up. I would wear sometimes colorful stuff in some shots and some maybe not in others. So it's just constantly changing uh, the visual stimulus for the person reading it, uh, reading it, watching it. If it's always the same color outfit and a bright light it's not visually stimulating because it's the same. So like if you ever go and watch um, kids television, uh, the color palettes always change. It's always about changing patterns and changing colors because it makes it more visually stimulating for the child because that's that's what they're engaged by. So like you'll never see a kid's cartoon with like one color on the screen Mm. or one thing. It's always multiple colors to make it pop. If you go and watch kids theater, like say Peppa Pig or something, the lighting always changes on stage because it makes it more visually stimulating for the child. But that's because that's the lowest level of stimulating because that's the most information they can take in is what they see. 
So if that's it for a kid, let's do it for an adult because an adult, same why wouldn't you? <laughs> like it's the yeah. same principles. No, it's interesting. Um, any other tips? Changing scene, changing the way the backdrop looks or the location looks. If everything is in the, with the same backdrop or the same look, again, it's not visually stimulating. So you might have to adapt that with lighting or the angle of things that are shot or mm. maybe not everything is from that dead front on shot. Just the more change, the more stimulating it is for your brain, the nicer it's going to be. Some of that I often think about, um, especially the intro of a showreel, is showing off what they're capable of or who they've worked off very early on. So kind of going back to that 20 second rule, like I was editing a showreel the other day who the choreographers worked with Madonna. So I put Madonna's face as early as possible to showcase the height of her yeah. ability. But I also think if you're doing that as like a student uh, reel, you should show you dancing next to either A, recognized dancers or B, lots of dancers that you're on par with. Yes, you don't want to have a video of you roasting everyone around you because they might not look at you as being good. They might look at everyone else as being bad. Mm. They might just be like, oh, they all went very good. That's why she's used it and she looks good. Whereas if you have you and five other people who are all doing a fantastic job and you're showing you have the ability to blend but still perform, that's showing a skill and that's going to be required. Yeah, because I guess as commercial dancers, it's your ability to blend. To blend, 100%. You, you know? have to be able to do both. You have to be able to stand out when you need to stand out but blend when you need to blend. Mm. So I guess have that moment where you are doing a solo trick section or whatever. Uh huh. It's like uh, we did it before with Taz and Nino. We were like, right, you guys should both put me in your show reel because you're instantly recognizable. Well, most, a lot of people within the UK who are going to hire you will know who I am, hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> or would have known who I am. So you automatically go, oh, they can dance with a I like know. a professional dancer who's had a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. They're not just going they're college grads who can dance. And it's the same why I always used to try and film me dancing with Elle because I knew how good she was. And I was like, she's going to make it. If people always see her dancing with me, they'll put her in that category. Mm -hmm. Hopefully higher. And she's killing it. She's killing it. Not, not thanks to me, thanks to her. But it's about, uh, yeah, selling yourself, mm -hmm. branding yourself. It, it is branding. That's the, that's the part as you are. Don't think of yourself as a dancer. Think of yourself as a business. And, and, and think about what you look like. So what you look like is going to help with what jobs you go for. So if you look really, really young, if like if you look, if you're 18 or 20, but you look 16, 17, don't film you in hot pants and heels. Like it's dumb. You're not going to book that job. Mm. You're not like you're going to get hired because you look young. Because if you look like a kid, we don't want to see you in hot pants and heels. Right. <laughs> Like, it just makes sense to yeah. me. Like, I know you think like, oh, but I love doing this. But the reality is you're not going to be seen as that. So help yourself be put into a role. Do, do you think there's a... Do you think it's better to be blank canvas or individuality? Like, I think it fully depends on you. If you're, if you have such an extreme look that it's hard to put you on, it, hard to blend you in, individuality all day. But why not showcase both? Mm-hmm. Like I can showcase both. I can be so like an individual because in, in I've yeah. got ginger hair and I'm white and I can put a colorful bright t-shirt on and I can be like a Disney character. Mm -hmm. Like I can be like the young poppy kid. Could, can't now. <laughs> but like, do you know what I mean? You can play that cheesy thing or I can be the thug guy or I can be just a guy in a suit. Like you want to show different, different versions levels. of you or different levels of you. Yeah. Dope. Done. If you want your show real message, Jake, on Instagram at Gibson. I do really good show reels. <laughs> uh, I do really good show reels. He does do really good show reels. Uh, he does really good filming and editing, and he's just a really great friend. He's actually fantastic across the board, so I, I highly recommend using Jake. Thanks. Um, he does lose remote controls, but besides that, <laughs> For this. Uh, yeah, I honestly, I highly recommend investing in your show reel, especially because auditions don't really happen anymore. So uh, your show reel is your audition. Well, this this is the interesting point, kind of going into investment quickly. Is like. I think uh, there's def it's hard to understand or quantify how much value you get from something that doesn't merely net you a return on investment. Um, so whilst you feel like you've spent X amount of money on a showreel, for headshot, makeup artist, editor, whatever, whatever it is, like, yes, it won't net you a return immediately, but it will net your return over a, a long haul. Like, yes. it's, it's like your showreel, for example, let's say it costs you 500 quid, random number. That's one job. Yeah. After one job, you've made your money back, mm -hmm. you know, or two jobs or whatever it is, or half a job. Like whatever the value is, is 
yes, it's a big chunk of money up front, but how much does that net you over the long course of, uh, over the long course of your career? Yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic investment. So yeah, if you're on your showreel, hit Jacob on Instagram. At, Plug city bitch. <laughs> at, <laughs> at Gibson underscore media underscore. And if you're really dumb and you can't take that information in, just message me or the Ins and Outs podcast and we'll direct you to, oh, to Jack. This Bob. wasn't a plug episode for the record. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was just like we've both been asked a lot about it lately. Yeah, so we're like, we'll cover this topic. And it just happens that. <laughs> and we covered alcoholism as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> solid work solid work anyway team much love don't forget to hit up Jacob Modak for his holistic health course on the 29th of Jan or if you just want one to one health coaching he's fantastic for that too um, oh we're coming Germany. to Germany baby Germany we've well, come to Germany that's, that's not definitely Germany. not German <laughs> Let's yeah, see you in Germany, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we're, uh, we're coming to Germany for a one-day intensive on the 26th of March. It is going to be in the city of... I don't even know if it's a city, but it's Bonn. called Bonn. Next to is it Bonn? Bonn. 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 <laughs> next to Cologne. Is that how I say it? Going with it. Sticking with it. Yeah, it's a one-day intensive. It is 11 till 6 p.m. 11 a.m. till 6 p.m. Uh, there'll be four dance classes a lunch break and a Q and A. Uh, it is ninety euros bargain, cheapest training you'll find. I've already spoke to three of my friends who also do programs, and they were like, "Why are you doing it so cheap? You're an idiot." And I said, "Cause I'm a man of the people." <laughs> That's what I said. I said I'm a man of the people, and I want them all to learn. We're going to learn. We're going to learn today, and you get me as well. Yeah, Jake's decided. coming along, uh, so you get some dope videos. Um. Yeah, it's going to be a really, really, really great day. Uh, all you got to do is be 16 plus. Bye. Peace out. Oh, if you want to, <laughs> but if you want to book on, hit me on Instagram <laughs> or uh, email the ins and outs info at gmail.com. Blah, blah, blah. The ins and outs info at gmail.com. Turn it into a wrap. <laughs> the ins and outs. Oh, <laughs> the ins and outs. E <sighs> The ins and outs info at gmail.com is the place to be. If you want to come along, you best email me and I'll bring my friend Jake. Don't miss the spot or you'll be late. Ooh. We need to work on this. Bye. <laughs>